Hello, and welcome to this film about hydrogen bonds, the strongest of the three intermolecular forces that we look at in year 12. Um, it's important to remember that they're not bonds, they're just extreme dipole-dipole intermolecular forces. And hopefully, by the end of this film, you'll understand that, and you'll make sure that you're not making that mistake of calling them something other than dipole-dipole forces, even though well, we'll come to that. I'll explain that in a bit more detail. They're definitely not bonds. Um, they are intermolecular forces, and hopefully you'll also know what features a molecule has to have if it's going to exhibit hydrogen bonding. Okay. So, what molecules can form hydrogen bonds? Well, as long as you've got a highly electronegative element, and by that we mean only three and these three are in the top right corner of the periodic table, where we'd expect to find the highly electronegative elements, you've got to have nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine. That nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine has to be directly bonded, or rather you have to have a hydrogen directly bonded to one of those atoms. Okay? So if your hydrogen is going to hydrogen bond with something, it has to be attached to a highly electronegative atom give you some examples of this in a moment. Okay? And there has to be a lone pair on the nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. Okay? Now sometimes you're asked to draw diagrams of hydrogen bonds, in which case it's important that you can demonstrate that you know what features the molecule has that enables it to hydrogen bond. So in other words, you have to show these points here in your diagram. Okay? So if we have a look at how this can be shown. Okay, First of all, you don't have to draw diagrams that are as complicated as this one. This is just showing you the water molecules in an ice crystal. And these green lines here, they're the hydrogen bonds. Okay, You can see they're much longer than the intramolecular bonds, the bonds between the oxygens and the hydrogens within the water molecules. So these are forces between water molecules. They are just intermolecular forces. They're not bonds about a tenth of the strength of a covalent bond to give you a rough idea. Okay, What this diagram hasn't done is it hasn't really demonstrated all the things that we need to know about what features a molecule has to have. So if you are asked to draw this in an exam, you might start off by drawing one water molecule. You would demonstrate that you've got a highly electronegative atom bonded to hydrogen by showing that that atom is slightly negative and that the hydrogens are slightly positive. Okay, So this, by showing these partial charges on your diagram, you have shown the examiner that you know that oxygen is a highly electronegative element and it's polarizing these bonds. Okay, You'll also be wise to include the lone pairs on the water molecules that can form these hydrogen bonds. Notice here that the water molecules can hydrogen bond to others. So here's a typical water molecule in here, they can bond to two others via their oxygen atom. Okay, That's because there's two lone pairs on the molecule. So if we now show one of the hydrogen bonds, that's an attraction between this slightly negative end and this slightly positive end. So it is literally a dipole-dipole force, right? But it's a very strong dipole-dipole force because of the large electronegativity difference and because this lone pair ends up being almost shared between the two atoms like a bonding pair would be. Okay, It doesn't turn into a bonding pair, it's just that it's kind of shared to an extent where we can almost start calling it a bond. That's why these things are called hydrogen bonds, Okay, although they are just intermolecular forces. Important point to note that in an exam you shouldn't say that water has dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonds. Okay. What they want you to spot is that hydrogen bonds are just dipole-dipole forces, but if you ask for the strongest molecular interaction or intermolecular force in water, you don't say dipole-dipole forces, you say hydrogen bonds, because they are an extreme version of dipole-dipole force, so they can be stronger than your average dipole-dipole force. Okay. So anyway, there's how to draw them in diagrams, making sure that you've made all the points that you're supposed to know about this big electronegativity difference, so the highly electronegative atom with a lone pair bonded to a hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen bond here is taking place between that slightly positive hydrogen 
and the lone pair on a highly electronegative element on another molecule. Okay, so there's the hydrogen bond. Okay, moving on. Just having a look at some other hydrogen bonds. Okay, here's hydrogen fluoride. So this is a pure substance. Okay, hydrogen fluoride in the liquid state. And we can see again we've got these dotted lines. They're the hydrogen bonds. Okay, why have we got hydrogen bonds here? Because we've got a highly electronegative atom with a lone pair that is attached to a hydrogen atom and making the hydrogen atom quite positive. So this positive end of the molecule attracts that lone pair and we form a hydrogen bond. The straight lines here, or rather the not dotted lines, they're the intramolecular bonds. Okay, they are covalent bonds, not intermolecular forces. So they are the intramolecular bonds. Okay, here's some hydrogen bonding in a mixture. Okay, so so far we've just looked at hydrogen bonding in pure substances in water and in HF. But if we look here, we've got a highly electronegative element with a lone pair. Okay, here we've got a highly electronegative element attached to hydrogen, so this hydrogen is going to be slightly positive. Okay, so we can get a hydrogen bond here between this highly electronegative element with a lone pair and a slightly positive hydrogen from another molecule. Okay, so this doesn't have to happen between molecules of the same type. This is really important when we look at solubility later on and explains why some things are so soluble in water. They can hydrogen bond with water, they're going to be extremely soluble in it. Okay, moving on, looking at some trends in boiling points and how we can explain some of the quirks using hydrogen bonding. Okay, here are the hydrides, so that is compounds with hydrogen, of group four here, group four, starting with carbon, going down to silicon, germanium, and then tin, okay, and group six. Now, if we just look at group four here, we've got this general rise in boiling points. How can we explain that? Well, we've seen that before. The molecules are getting heavier. That means there's more and more electrons. That means the but dis <laughs> dis dispersion forces are getting stronger and stronger. Okay, so this raises the boiling point of the molecules as you go down the group. And you can see that same trend for most of group six. Okay, from sulfur downwards, there's this same general upward trend. Okay, but at the top of group six, you've got this really odd looking quirk, right? Water has a really unusually high boiling point. Okay, and that's because there's hydrogen bonding in water. There isn't any hydrogen bonding in any of these molecules because the atom that's attached to hydrogen isn't electronegative enough. And if you look at the top of group four, carbon, carbon isn't electronegative enough to polarize that carbon-hydrogen bond enough. So there's no hydrogen bonding in group four at all. You do get it in groups five, six, and seven. So if you looked at group five, you'd expect to see a similar kind of pattern to what you see in group six, an unusually high one at the start, and then a dip, and then a gradual rise. Same thing for group seven. So you'd expect HF that we looked at earlier to have a really unusually high boiling point for its group. Okay, and as we said a moment ago, hydrogen bonds will also have a massive effect on solubility. And the last film, um, the last film about bonding really in year 12, in fact, um, is to do with intermolecular forces and solubility. So that might be a good place for you to go next.